Hey guys, it's JC, the Gospel Centered Health Coach. It is actually Halloween weekend right now. I'm hiding up in my room tonight because my family is watching Halloween scary movie downstairs. I hope you can't hear the booming and the screaming through the floor, <laughs> but it is so not my deal. I have nightmares for like weeks. I can't, I just can't. So I'm missing on the fun, but really not. I'm just kind of hiding in my room, but I was getting relaxed and then I thought, no, I've been thinking about Halloween a lot this week. I just thought of some things to share really quick because for me, Halloween was always just the beginning of the holiday binge. It was just a chocolate fest and I sometimes it would just let myself go ham. Other times I'd say like, no, I'm going to control it this year. And I really never did. And so much chocolate, so many Reese's, like so many but as well, I have so much love for those that it's a love hate relationship, right? With Halloween for some of us that struggle with little trouble binging. But so I wanted to share a quick story. Um, you know, my channel, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, by now my channel is about letting Christ into this health journey, letting him heal, um, this battle, this struggle, making him sweeter in our life than the food and then the sweets and treats. So, so this little story I've been thinking of all week, it actually comes from Greek mythology. Um, it's the story of the sirens, the song of the sirens. If you remember myth mythology, studying it in school, um, the sirens were like half bird, half woman creatures that could sing such beautiful songs from their island that as the ships would sail by, their songs were so like mesmerizing, compelling, and incredibly gorgeous that the men would just hurl themselves off the ship and just swim to their deaths and shipwreck their ships just to just to get to these women that were singing these songs. Um, and so it's actually a really dangerous thing to sail by their island. But there were a couple of characters in Greek mythology that handled it a little differently. So the first was Odysseus. He um, had a plan because he wanted to hear the song of the sirens. So he told his crew, I want you to just like tie me as tightly as you can to the mast so I cannot budge. And then he filled all of his crew's ears with wax so they couldn't hear. But he said, do not under any circumstances let me loose until we're past, no matter how much I beg. And so they did that in the plan. It did work. They sailed past and they were able to not shipwreck um, because of the sirens. So the second character, if you remember this, is Orpheus, and he um, had a different plan. As they were nearing the island of the Sirens, he just got out his lyre, and he started playing his own music. And it was such a, it was such a more beautiful, more amazing um, piece of music. It was so much better. The Sirens were just drowned out. The, the crew didn't even think about them at all. They were just, they weren't even in temptation because his music was so much more satisfying to them that they were able to sail by just fine. So I'm guessing you probably know where I'm going with this, but um, I was Orpheus the first, no, sorry, Odysseus, the first maybe two decades of my life dealing with this battle with food and especially sugar for me. I don't know what yours looks like, but it was chocolate and sugar and treats and trying to handle it and manage it. I was the girl that was sailing off the ship and shipwrecking my life again and again and binging and binging, even though I did not want to. I just, I just kept losing it over the song of the chocolate. But, um, I was kind of like Odysseus, like all my plans, all my diets, all my like white knuckle willpower, tying myself to the mast. Like I can do this. I can do this. And there were times I was successful, but truthfully, just like him, my heart still wanted it deep down. My desires were no different. Like it, I still wanted the chocolate. I was just white knuckling thinking, well, I don't know what else to do. I know I've got to get this under control, but just tie me to the mast. Like anything I could think of that would help me stay in control. But in the end, the song and the chocolate almost always won. Almost always won. Um, it didn't really change for me until I began to realize that turning this part of my life over to Christ, he could sing a sweeter song to my heart than I had ever let him. I just hadn't gone there and, and truly tasted what his bread of life could taste like, the depths of it, to where it became so compelling that all my other addictions and and little escapes and guilty pleasures just fell away. Like I didn't want them anymore. And it really, really didn't move to that place in my life. So I've been thinking about that story this week and how to get 
to that point where Christ's song is sweeter where our heart is so driven to him and compelled by him that we just lose our need to eat emotionally or to eat addictively or to just shipwreck all of our plans because of the song of that addictive food. But how do we get to that point? Like, that's what I've just been thinking of. Um, I, I, was, I was thinking of John 4 where Christ says to the woman at the well, the food I can, the water I give you, it is nothing like this temporary water you're drawing right now. The water I have will just be this well of water springing up inside of you. You will never thirst. You will never thirst. And then he says it again in John 6 in his sermon. John 6, 35, he says, you know, I'm the bread of life. You're, it is such good bread. You will never hunger. Like he makes us these promises over and over in scripture. There's one I was just talking with somebody earlier today in John or in Psalms 107, where he satisfieth the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Like he is enough. So I, I think the key, it's kind of, maybe you're not going to like this analogy and maybe I've used it before. Forgive me if I have, but it's like a dysfunctional relationship, right? A toxic, abusive, or dysfunctional relationship where you know that partner is not really working for you, but your heart is attached. You still have so much love, or if you call it love, but it's that a deep emotional attachment to that person that you just can't walk away and you know you should and you can't. It isn't until we break with that toxic dif dysfunctional relationship and actually turn ourselves to a new direction, to focus in a new direction that we can find a new healthy relationship, right? And isn't that what we're trying to do? We're trying to break our toxic relationship with food and start a new, more beautiful relationship with Christ where he truly is that soothing um, satisfaction to our soul. So part of it came for me in beginning, and, and I couldn't do this by myself. The first step, um, well, actually, this is crazy, you guys. Sorry, this just popped in my head. It's actually step seven of the 12-step program. If, if you've ever gone through a 12 step, I worked in food addiction for a while. And the first few steps are acknowledging our powerlessness and, and acknowledging that Christ can heal it and that he has the ability. But by step seven, that specific step is asking him to change us. And for me, that's where finally things began to change. And my heart began to detach and attach to him was asking him to give me the courage to walk away, asking me to get, asking him to fill me with the courage, the strength, the grace, the ability to walk away even while the song was still seductive. Does that make sense? It almost like was like I thought at first that I couldn't leave until I wasn't seduced anymore. Like it's still seducing me, so I have no choice. No, my first few steps away in starting to turn from that addiction came while that call was still very seductive in my life. Christ, his song wasn't yet the loudest song in my heart. The food still was, but his grace began to override that and just give me the ability to begin to look away from the sirens and look toward him and begin to take in his song, begin to process what that would look like. But that's something we can ask him for. That's and, and we're not going to be able to enter into this new place with him until we break with the old. It's like we want to tell him, no, sing me the song and then I'll let go. Once I can hear your song, then I'll let go of the sirens. And I think he says, no, you show me that act of faith. And, and it's grace empowered. It's spirit empowered. He helps us make this break. But even while the song is still in our ears, we show him that act of faith that we don't want that shipwreck anymore in our lives, that we want the sweetness of his song, that they can, that we want to taste what it's like when he is sweeter to, sweeter to us than the treats. And please, please, if you hear nothing else from this video, it's that he can be, he can be sweeter. He is, he promises us, but some of us have never tasted it because we've been so busy, busy feasting from the table of the world that we just haven't been able to taste anything he has to offer. But it's in cutting ourselves off from that toxic relationship and saying, okay, Lord, I want to taste it. Help me. Help me.
Okay, there are more resources below. I'll link them below. If you've never checked out anything else from my site before, I have a lot of videos on sugar addiction. I have online classes. There's a lot below that you can check out if you want to kind of keep this roll ball, ball rolling. If this is the year 2021, if that's when you're watching this, you may be watching this in 2022 or whenever. If this is the time where you're ready, you're tired of launching yourself over the edge of the ship and shipwrecking your plans again and again and again. If it has done so much damage in your life that you're ready to make a shift and to hear what his song sounds like, that's so sweet, we will never need anything else ever again. Never need any of those other little things that we try to fill our soul with. It is possible through him. Check out those links below. I hope that helped. Good luck. If this is Halloween weekend for you and you're watching this or whenever, my prayer is that you will find him and his sweet song and be able to let it fill your soul. Thanks. Have a good night.